Welcome back. So what you're seeing here is a video feed from a board inspection tool that I made out of an old 3D printer, a USB camera, a little bit of Python code, and an Eagle placement file. And I'm going to use this tool to inspect boards as they come out of the reflow oven to, to check and see the placement is still correct before we actually do an initial power up. So if you're interested in seeing how I did this, uh, keep watching. Uh, it was very interesting. It was a really quick project, just stuff I had laying around. All right, let's get started. Here's what we're going to use for our motion platform. It's an old printer bot, Simple Metal. Um, it was donated to me because I had a problem. I had to replace the uh, USB connector. Um, and once I got that fixed, I went and tested it out. And it worked fine. So my plan here is to remove the extruder and that fan and put a USB camera instead. Uh, one thing to note on this is it uses an inductive uh, sensor for the Z axis uh, in stop, which uh, turned out to be a really good idea. The camera I'm using is a camera I bought several years ago. It's from a, a company called ELP. I got this off of AliExpress. It is a uh, 1080p. Um, well, you can see it's a 1080p at uh, 50, 60, and 120, depending on what kind of resolution you want. And I got it with a, um, here we go. I got it with a six millimeter lens, which allows me to move the camera fairly close to, uh, to the subject matter. In this case, the uh, surface mount parts. And it was about $35. And this is a really nice camera. Um, it is, comes on a circuit board. It doesn't have any enclosure, so you need to make a, a, a mount for it, which is fine. Um, we'll go ahead and show you that in a minute. So this platform here um, runs Marlin. Uh, I don't know what version it is, but it's fine. We're, we're just going to want to execute simple G-code commands, you know, do a homing cycle and maybe some uh, X and Y movements as well as adjusting the focus by using the Z-axis. So here's the commands for Marlin. Um, they're pretty straightforward. This is a little bit different. Marlin runs a little bit different than Gerbil. So I had to go through and uh, kind of familiarize myself with uh, the you know two or three commands to make sure that they worked correctly. So we will um, we'll bring up, come over to Fusion here. So I found a step file for the simple bot metal, and you can see it here. And I've got the uh, extruder hidden, as well as the fan. Um, and this is a pretty accurate model, and I was really glad to find it because it made things really simple. Um, Here's the camera. I found this over at GrabCAD, and um, this is the uh, this is close to what I have. Uh, this connector is the USB connector, and the camera's dimensions here are what is this dimension here? Of course, it's not going to. Let me see if I can get that dimension for you. That line to that line. I think it's like a 90 or something. Oh, 38 millimeters. So it's 38 millimeters square. And these holes here are not M3s, they're M2s. So, um, you know, I was able to, I had a set, I had a bunch of M2 screws. So we're looking pretty good. So let's um, turn off, uh, turn off the camera and turn this simple metal back on. And we'll get back to the home position here. All right, so what I wanted to do was to 3D print a, a, um, an adapter that hooks on through these these holes on the top of the the uh, printer bot and gets the camera lens down really close to the edge of where this inductive sensor for Z axis works. Um, I wanted to get it way down way down here so it's it's down at this level. So I needed something that was I think it's about 25 millimeters high. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. Here's the camera mount. And then I'll go ahead and turn the camera on. So this is what I ended up with. And this lens here, in order to be really close focus, uh, it's a threaded lens, and I did move it out quite a bit. Um, but I'm able to, um, I end up running the Z height of the entire platform about 15 millimeters off the board height. And I do that so that I can... Uh, if I'm inspecting a board that already has connectors on it for power and that kind of thing, it, it will fly over the top of all those things and still be in focus 
to do the board inspection. We'll see that here in a, in a few minutes. Okay, so that was uh, a 3D printer. The other thing I wanted was a way when this is, when this goes through its homing cycle, it puts um, X and Y uh, zero over here. This is kind of like the home position over here. So what I wanted to do is to make a, um, a fixture to uh, align the board up to the, uh, the motion platform. So I went ahead and fabricated this little fixture. And this just kind of pressure fits on here. I did provision for some holes down here for some uh, brass threaded inserts, but I ended up getting um, this height, this uh, gap height is actually pretty good, and this uh, fixture just kind of pushes in there and stays still during the motion. So I didn't need to use those, but these down here were for threaded inserts for M3s, which will allow me to attach this uh, fixture to the motion platform itself. So with that, um, uh, we will show you some images and run through a couple of commands. And I'll talk a little bit about the uh, couple of different utility programs that I wrote to do board inspection. So here's the board we're looking at today. It's a ESP32 Gerbil board that I made. And next to it is the USB camera. And there is my adapter. And behind there is the extruder that I pulled out as well as the fan. And we'll zoom in here on my adapter plate. This is the first project I've used these uh, brass knurled uh, inserts for plastic. Just heat these up with the tip of your soldering iron. They sink right in and they grab a hold of the PLA. And it's a great way to attach uh, PLA or 3D printed parts together. Everything I'm showing you now is actually in a GitHub repository. I'll bring that up here. It is in Hollow 2040 slash SMTT tools. And so everything I'm showing you is actually in a repository. So we will uh, put that away. And so let me start. Uh, Eagle, my is an Eagle 7.7, .7, which stores its board file as an XML file. And the um, XML element, named element, is where the board information, the placement uh, information is stored. So let's take a look at a board file and we'll look for that R1. So they're, they're, uh, the attributes in XML are quoted. So here's the R1 element. Uh, and you can see its, its name is R1. Its package is an R0603. And its X and Y value are shown there, 59.69 and 90.805. So the first program I wrote was just a simple program called GoTo. And it uses, it's a bash program. So I'll go ahead and look at that here. Uh, this is for your really old school dudes. Um, the guts of it are right here. It runs the board file through a grep looking for the, the uh, de ref reference designator that you specify on the command line. Not on the command line, uh, at the prompt. And then it uses awk and redirects that output from both of that, from that pipe all the way into the, the uh, serial port. So we'll go ahead and run that here. So if you write go to, you get a prompt back and then we can type in R1 and that just basically parses the, uh, the board file, uh, creates the G code to run to R1 itself. And this is nice. I mean, it's, it's, it's quicker than actually typing in the, the coordinate system and typing in raw G code. Um, okay, so, the, but this has got its limitations to it. You'd have to type in every res reference designator on your board, and this is not an inspection tool. So I moved on, and I created this board inspect tool, and this is a Python code that actually uses XML tree. It opens up, uh, it opens up the board file and, and uh, parses it and creates a Python dictionary with the reference designator and the XY coordinates, and then it lets you do a lot of other things like uh, set the board um, zero point, uh, move, you can, jog, you can jog around. You can also correct the focus by moving the platform Z actually up and down, and that corrects the focus. That way you don't have to um, change the focus on the camera itself. So I'm not gonna show you too much of that here. If you're interested in that, you can look at that, uh, that code on the, uh, on the GitHub repository. But we'll go ahead and run it. The first thing it does is it prints out the help menu. And you'll see that the, the board actually moved over to um, 
the first component that it found. In this case, it's a connector. So uh, this tool doesn't distinguish between through hole and surface mount parts. So it's going to go through and look at all the parts. You know, typically my boards have the majority of the parts are, are uh, surface mount parts and there might be a few uh, um, connectors. And so I didn't bother figuring out if it was a connector or not. We just go through and we look at all the components that are placed on the board. So this is the help menu here and it's always available if you type a question mark. And um, uh, the first thing is you can do jogs using the um, IJKNL, which is just like when you play uh, computer games. And if you use the lowercase version of that, it moves at a small amount. If you do a shift and uh, you do an uppercase version of those, it moves by one millimeter versus 0.1 millimeters. And uh, E and D move the um, Z axis up and down. We can move to the zero point. We can set the zero points. We can move our board anywhere on the build platform and set the zero point. Uh, we can also uh, start a home sequence to get the machine home to back to where it was. So um, what it's doing now is it moved to the first part because this is assuming that you have your board placed, your zero point reference set and all that stuff. So you're just going to, you know, you're going to pull a board out of the, or before you put it into the reflow oven, make sure that the, the, uh, the uh, pick and place machine placed their parts accurately. If it didn't, it's going to show you those. And then you can go and correct those if you want. And then you can also run a board through that's been through the oven and see if everything's soldered right and you didn't have those parts that pick up and move around during the reflow process. So what it's doing now is it's sitting there and it's waiting. And if you hit a space bar right now, it moves to the next component. So you can see that I'm moving to these connectors that are along the bottom of the board. And um, <clears throat> then this is the fiducial marker that's over there. So I'm going to move over to, this is R25, 24. And this is Q9. Now I'm going to move the platform up and down and I'll show you the focus aspect of this. So that's E and D. So you can see that I, I'm, I'm in focus with the top of the part. Um, but that's not really what I want to focus on. I, <laughs> I really want to focus on the pads. So we're going to move back down again and get the pads to be in focus. Because that's really what we want to inspect, not the, uh, not the label on the part. But you can move it up and down. And so if your parts are different heights... Um, you could go in and modify this to move the Z up and down as well. But we're really interested in the surface of the board and the, and the solder pads themselves. So if you can sit here and manually go through step one, one at a time if you want. Or there's one more option on this little program. It's called Auto Move. And what that does is it moves to a part, waits for a certain amount of time, and then it moves to the next one. So you can quickly run through all the parts on a board. That command is a lowercase a. We'll go ahead and do that. So you'll see that it's um, it's moving to each part sequentially, and then the printout of the standard out is showing you which part it's moving to. So it's working its way all the way through this board, and the way it scans the board is it breaks the board up into bands, uh, horizontal bands of 10 millimeters high. It finds all the parts in that band, and then it moves from um, it moves in X either positive or negatively. And it kind of optimizes the movement to minimize uh, to minimize the actual time spent moving the platform around. So you can see it's relatively fast. Uh, we'll see some parts here that are that didn't get so that one right there. C10 has got a problem, so we'll go back and um, focus on that. And we can stop this auto thing anytime by just hitting the lowercase a again, and it'll stop. And we can pick up where we left off. But you can see that. It's really pretty fast. There's probably maybe 50 parts on this board and it, it'll get through this in a couple of minutes and it's showing us everything. So this is a really good way of looking at boards and uh, not missing parts that didn't get placed right or didn't get soldered correctly. Uh, you can do this very quickly and just kind of just go through this. But we'll go back to C10 here because we can do the go-to in this program as well. Um, that is a, a G command, a lowercase g. So it's just about to get done here. All right, so there's the f fiducial. So we're going to go and run it again, and we're going to go to, uh, what do we say, C10? Okay, so C10, you can see that C10 isn't soldered on very well. So that's pretty much wraps up this uh, <laughs> this little adventure I had in making a board inspection tool. 
it was just with stuff that I had laying around. And I think it's going to be a pretty valuable tool for my uh, surface mount board manufacturing. Okay, thanks for watching.